equality here. Uh, notice that each of these uh, terms on the left-hand side are, um, at, whoops, it should be greater than three, right? All the terms are clear on the left-hand side individually are uh, greater than three. Uh, square root of 11 is certainly greater than three. Uh, same for the square root of 12. And also the square root of 14 is close to four actually. We'll go ahead and say greater than three, right? So all three of these terms are greater than three, which means all three of these terms must sum up to be greater than nine. And again, this one's pretty close to four, right? Now notice here the square root of 111 is bounded below by 10. and above by 11, okay? So um, you kind of has your interest up here. Again, all this adds up to three plus three plus three is nine, and that's a crude lower bound. So again, square root of 14 is close to four, so this looks like it, it might be very close. Now, uh, it turns out that this is an ideal problem for the Cauchy-Schwartz or something called the one trick. Let me write that down, the one trick. Mathematics, after all, is a big bag of tricks, right? But what you do, this Cauchy-Schwartz inequality holds for all real numbers, not just positive real numbers like the uh, AMGM inequality. It holds for all real numbers. And so what we're going to do is just rewrite this piece right here as 1 times root 11. Okay, now again, that'll be plain. 1 will be like your a sub 1 b sub 1 will be root 11, and then we'll have plus 1 um, times root 12. All right, and then uh, what? 1 times root 14. Okay, now you can see where that, uh, it's got us, this, that's exactly this left-hand side here. That's exactly this left-hand side. A, the a sub i's are just... Uh, a1, A2, A3 is 1, 1, 1, and then B1, B2, B3 is uh, root 11, root 12, root 14. Now we're going to go ahead and do the left hand, uh, the right hand side, excuse me. Now again, all the A's, A sub I's are just 1, so 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared is just going to sum up to the square root of 3. And you know, this uh, cauchy schwartz inequality is pretty neat. It, it, it relates a dot product in vector notation to the product of the magnitudes of the vectors. And uh, notice it relates addition to multiplication more or less, okay? Now, this next piece. Now, the b sub 1s was, were, were square root objects, so you have to square the square roots, and so you get the sum of 11... 12 and 14. Okay, and again, folks, the the b sub i's were the square roots. Over here, the b sub i's are getting squared, okay? Now, let's see, what is all this equal to? Uh, so we get uh, less than or equal to... Um, okay, folks, this is going to be... Uh, Let's see, 3 times 37, the square root of 3 times 37. And of course, that is equal to what we were in trying to establish. And so I kind of like this problem in the sense that it shows you how unrestricted uh, Cauchy-Schwartz is. It doesn't care. We just arbitrarily picked one ones here because it's, it's a nice way to get this left-hand side in the form of the left-hand side of the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. And a lot of you guys may have seen this called Cauchy-Schwartz Bunikowski, I think. But uh, Cauchy-Schwartz inequality, or the CSB sometimes, there's another guy associated with this thing. But again, one of the more prevalent inequalities um, in, in all of mathematics. And I uh, hope this helps. Again, they call this the one trick.